Hello and welcome back to our discussion on MOSFETs. Uh, now that we've done the basics and they're out of our way, it's time we graduate to small signal models and basic amplifier design. Now, why we study small signal models is to see the, or rather, the observed behavior of a MOSFET uh, when you apply small signals. You know as against large ones. Um, you'll of course understand the difference between the two as we proceed through the course. For now, uh, let's look at what small signal models are. When we're looking at these, we're gonna be done, we're done with these diagrams. No more bulky, big, huge looking MOSFETs. Only sleek, these type of symbols, or small signal models. Let's first build a small signal model and see how it really looks. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have already heard of it, um, but let's see how it's actually built. If you look at a MOSFET, what are the three main terminals that are present? One is gate, the other is source, and the other is drain. Now let's connect the three uh, to look like a circuit, okay? Let's say this has a terminal, and we gotta put connections here. The gate, is it physically connected to the source? You'd say yes, it is connected through the oxide layer, but then the oxide layer doesn't support conduction, and anything that doesn't support conduction in a circuit is shown by an open circuit. It is, it's just a plain open space. All right, but what we do have there in that gap is the voltage between the gate and the source. Okay, so that's the way. So the gate source side is taken care of in the uh, small signal model. Let's draw the drain source side. Now the drain source again don't have a physical connection, but when the conduction starts, yes, they do. Their connection is the channel which has a current flowing through it from the drain to the source the current always remember we're talking about the conventional current when we say when we say current so it's going to be the conventional current flow from the drain to the source but actually electrons are flowing from the source to the drain okay that said what is the value of this current remember transconductance we've seen GM equals the change in current obtained because of the change in gate source voltage. So it is safe to say that the amount of current inside the channel at a given time is can be equivalent to GM times VGS, isn't it? Like this is the current conversion factor when this voltage is applicable applied, so it's obvious. Okay, so let's write that down here. That's it. You have your first ever small signal model already. Okay, just remember this model. We will build over this as we go further. Now, uh, a few lectures before this, we've seen a few second order effects like channel and modulation, body effect, and such things. Why don't we include that in this? small signal model and see what we come to, what we get actually. So this is the gate, VGS, this is source, this is your GM times VGS current flowing from the drain to the source. Let's first look at channel length modulation, I mean the effect of that, or rather including that for small signal model. Okay, let's call it CLM just for convenience. It's too long to write every time. So this is the drain here again. What happens in channel length modulation? Because of the voltage um, applied from the drain to the source, between the drain and the source, the VDS, the variations in this voltage are gonna vary the channel length. That's why it's called channel length modulation. 
So if you have a channel and modulation, what's ultimately going to change? The current in the channel, correct? So we know that this, even this, is going to be a current source. Now, what does this current source actually depend on? It depends on VDS, correct? And we have a little constant here, say just an arbitrary constant called alpha. All right, that's how we can show that. Now, if you look at this, this part, the channel and modulation current source, what do you get? I mean, any current source that is um, that has a voltage, that has a le voltage applied across it linearly, it can be represented as a resistor. A resistor is nothing but a current source which has a linear relationship or is, is linearly across a voltage source. <laughs> All right. So we can replace this current source with a resistor. Say, again, we draw the same thing. So we're going to draw this so many times that you will be absolutely thorough by the time you're done with this lecture. OK? And here, let's call this RO, the output resistance. OK? So we've included channel and modulation in this. Um, let's also derive a small equation for the output resistance, just to be sure. Um, okay, RO can be given as delta VDS over delta ID. Is that clear? The change in drain current because of the change in drain source voltage. Okay, so this can also be written as uh, 1 over delta ID over delta VDS. Now, one thing I forgot to mention before when I was working with channel, I've been mean, working on channel and modulation was the inclusion of channel and modulation in the drain current equation. Drain current equation when you don't include channel and modulation is given by half mu and C ox W over L VGS minus VTH, the whole square, when the MOSFET is in saturation, right? When you include channel length modulation, what you're going to have is 1 plus lambda VDS. That's the only term that's going to get added. It's obvious. Now, if you work this out, what do you get? This is ID, all right? So ID plus lambda ID times VDS, correct? So this is the drain current that gets added because of the channel length modulation, all right? It's kind of obvious here, but just remember that this term gets added when you were talking about channel and modulation. So we have to differentiate, uh oh, we have to differentiate this equation with respect to VDS to get RO, right? So what do you get? This entire term is constant. And when you differentiate this, you get just a one lambda. So delta ID over delta VDS is going to give you. Uh, the entire thing we can call this ID right and the differentiation of this gives you lambda so what do you get RO is finally 1 over lambda times ID this is a very 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 important very important thing in analog design the output resistance every amplifier design is going to need you to know this so just remember how we derived it. It's very simple. I, I, I urge you to work these equations out once you're done watching the lecture. It'll just help you retain whatever you learned better. Okay? So that's the output resistance. Give me one second. Let me change something here. Let me change the color. All right. Okay? That's the output resistance. So we have uh, we finally have a small signal model that has taken into account the channel and modulation. Let's look at body effect now. So when I'm drawing this, just maybe close your eyes and think how the diagram would be so that you know what's going on here. So the source, 
it's all the same you see all the starting steps are the same so you know how to do these right and we have the channel length modulation here this is the drain okay now we have to take into consideration the body effect what happens in the body effect there is a voltage difference between the source and the bulk say this is the bulk so we can call it VBS or VSB okay so that's all body effect is right I mean that there is a voltage difference between the source and the bulk now just as when there is a difference between the gate and the source I mean there's a voltage difference between the gate and the source you have a current flowing same way if you have a voltage difference between the bulk and the source you're gonna have another current flowing it's gonna act like a second gate that's all right that is a very big clue to you to understand what the value of this current is gonna be so obviously it's gonna have VBS term right what else is it gonna have it's gonna have a transconductance right because you're applying a voltage you'd like to know what amount of that voltage is getting converted into the current go back to the transconductance lectures but here our transconductance is called GMB because it's with respect to the body we're talking about alright uh, the derivation for GMB is slightly uh, hard right now and uh, we will get back to it uh, once we if we come across a problem that needs uh, that needs us to solve for GMB but all you need to know is this is how a small signal model looks when you include a normal MOSFET, a channel length modulation, a body effect. But don't forget to include this. Okay? So that's about it of, uh, on the small signal models. I hope you enjoyed and soon we'll be going into the amplifier design section. Great. Thanks for, having, thanks for watching these videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.